this is the way the crest card should look. On the top, you're going to have your defibrillator. Below that, you're going to have a clear box. Inside the clear box, you're going to have your defibrillator pads. You're going to have electrodes, a nasal cannula, non-rebreather mask, venti mask, and more defibrillator recording paper. You're going to have papers for recording. Here's your respiratory box. Over here, you have your AMBU bag, the needle box, and oxygen. And behind the cart, you'll find the backboard. This is the first drawer of the crash cart. On the top left corner over here, you're going to find vials of magnesium sulfate, which can be given for torsades or low magnesium. Next, you're gonna find here is calcium chloride, one gram, which can be given for hypocalcemia. Right here, we have lidocaine. Per the ACLS protocol, the first dose of lidocaine is one to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. And the second dose is 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram. Right here, you have some D5W in case of hypoglycemia. Right here, you're going to find some saline flushes. And right here, you're going to find sodium bicarbonate, which can be given during cardiac arrest to correct metabolic acidosis. Right here, you're going to find vials of amiodaron. Remember, the first dose of amiodaron is 300, and the second dose is 150. Next to the amiodarone, you're going to find atropine. Atropine can be given for severe bradycardia. These are one milligram syringes, which can be given every three to five minutes. If you're ever giving atropine, make sure your pads are on in case the atropine does not work and you need to do transcutaneous pacing. Next to the atropine, you're gonna find epinephrine. Epinephrine can be given for V-fib and pulseless VTAC and asystole. One milligram can be given every three to five minutes. In the second drawer of the crash cart, we have over here, we have D5W 250 mLs. We have D5W 100 mLs. Down here, we have adenosine. So adenosine, remember the first dose is six milligrams and the second dose is 12 milligrams if you need a second dose. And whenever you're giving adenosine, please make sure the defibrillator pads are on. Over here, you're gonna find dopamine. Dopamine can be given in case of hypotension, bradycardia, and cardiac arrest. Right here in this covered bag, to protect it from the light, you're going to find levofed. One vial is four milligrams. You're going to find two vials in here. If you need to mix levofed, you would mix levofed with the D5W250. This one syringe, you're going to get single strength, which is going to be four milligrams and 250 mLs, which will be 16 micrograms. If you need double strength, you would take two vials, mix it into the D5, and you're going to get eight milligrams in 250 D5W, which will give you 32 micrograms. Next, you're gonna find some lidocaine for any, uh, it's topical lidocaine for any procedures. Over here, you're going to find metoprolol, five milligrams. Metoprolol can be given for tachycardia or also hypertension, and you give that slow IV push. Right here in the corner, you're gonna find some sodium vials. You have medication labels here. Right here, you have Narcan, which can be given in case of an opioid overdose, and you have Flumazenel, which can be given to reverse benzodiazepine. In the third drawer, you're gonna find tape. You're going to find blunt needle, filtered needle, 21 gauge needles. You're gonna find three cc, five cc, and 10 cc, and 50 cc syringes. You're going to find normal saline flushes. You're going to find IV catheters over here, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, and 22 gauge. You're going to find IV start kit. You're going to find two by two gauze. You're going to find three way stopcocks. Chloropreps, scalpels, covidine iodine swabs, and insulin needles. In the fourth drawer, you're going to find sterile gloves, size seven and a half and eight, normal saline, two liters of normal saline. You're going to find normal saline 250. You're going to find two bags of that. You're going to find one liter of LR. You're going to find D5W 250 mLs. You're going to find two bags of that. Normal saline 500. You're going to find two bags of that. You're going to find a sterile drape towel, two of them. Four by four gauze. IV tubing. 
IV secondary tubing and a bifuse set. In the fifth drawer, this is what you're going to find. Everything that you need for suctioning. Of course, your yank guard. You're also going to find a tummy syringe, a nasogastric tube, a six in one connector, pressure bags, mask, and a triple lumen CVC kit. Here's how to open the emergency medications and get them ready for administration. All of the boxes on the bottom will say which side to push and open. They're all going to be the same, so I'm just going to show you with one of them, the epi. So right here it says push and pull to open. So just push the sides and you pull there, and your medication will come right out. Next, you remove all the yellow parts, twist this in, remove the top here so that you can prime. If you want to prime it, and it's ready to be connected to the patient and administered. And to administer, you just push. I wanted to bring this app to everyone's attention and please download this. This is an amazing app to help you with your documentation during codes. George from CVICU brought this to my attention and I'm very grateful that he did. So if you take a look into CodeScribe, the first thing that I would do is I would go to the settings and I would select vibrate when over the limit. I will show you why in just a few minutes. Okay, so let's say you have a patient that codes and start the code timer and then you can record all of the steps that are done. So CPR should be started right away. Just a reminder, as one team member is doing the CPR, another team member needs to be putting the defibrillator pads on and also the electrodes. Okay, let's say, for example, our patient is in V-fib, which is a shockable rhythm. So let's say we deliver a shock. And let's just also say that we go ahead and deliver one epinephrine as per the ACLS guidelines. I just want to show you, um, you can also select medications and you can deliver other medications as well. So let's say, let's just go ahead and say we gave a sodium bicarbonate. Now I'm going to speed up the time a little bit to show you the alerts. So you can see here two minutes of CPR have passed. So now it's time to check for a pulse. So we're going to pause CPR. Remember, you're only supposed to check for a pulse for 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it, it's red and starts vibrating here again, telling you that it's time to resume CPR. And you see in the top right corner of the, the red box, it says two. So now you're on your second cycle of CPR. As you can see here, three minutes has passed with our last epi, so we can give another epi. Epi can be delivered every three to five minutes. There we go. All right, let's say that this code was successful. We're going to stop CPR. And once you stop, then you see this little um, envelope here, and that means that you can send it, you can text it to yourself, or you can just read the information here. And that is what you can use to fill out your code sheet. Now let's quickly go over who needs to respond to the codes. Event of a code, it's important that not all of the nurses or nursing assistants go to the room. We still have to watch the other patients on the floor. But here are the roles that we need. We need at least two people compressing, doing CPR. We need one person taking ownership of the AED or monitor. One person has to be in control of the airway, at least until respiratory gets there. We need a team leader, somebody that is giving medications, and the recorder. The nurses and nursing assistants that are not directly involved in the code can watch the rest of the patients on the unit. And lastly, a quick reminder on how to shock a patient if indicated. If your patient is in V-fib or pulseless VTAC and they need to be shocked, ACLS guidelines recommends the initial shock between 120 and 200. You can change the amount of joules. It defaults to 200, but you can change it as per um, the physician or advanced practice provider's order. You can charge, 
it's not going to let me know because we're not connected. But then you can say once it's charged, all clear, all clear, CPR stop, deliver the shock, and then resume CPR.